as far as I know, and the, and we are broadcast. So let me just make sure we've got participants available. Yep. I think um, I hadn't heard from Connor, so I imagine somebody may be here. You may log on soon. NJ, let me know. You're welcome to start the meeting whenever we do have a, a quorum here. Um, thank you. I'm going to pull up the agenda on my end. Okay. And I'll be, I'll be ready. Oh, and uh, Michael Villalobos is coming tonight from UC Davis, which is great. So he hopefully will be here soon. Um, and Kate cannot make it. She's got a school board meeting. Great. Okay, so um, it is 6.34. I think that we're ready to um, start the meeting. And um, I, I believe that Connor will join us as soon as possible. Um, but I, I suggest that we get started. So, um, <clears throat> Okay, so I am calling this meeting to order. And good evening, everyone, my fellow commission members um, and member of the public. Hi, Carrie, it's really good to see you. And so um, I'm going to start by disclosing that this meeting is happening remotely in compliance with AB, the ordinance um, AB 361. And uh, we're still dealing with a pandemic, so we're keeping everyone safe, including ourselves. Um, and I think this is all I want to say right now. I need to get used again to chairing. It's been a, a hot minute since I've done it. So, Carrie, I think that we're ready for your roll call. All so, righty. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, for our new commissioners, we will do uh, introductions. Um, in just a few minutes, but to get the meeting started, we'll just uh, call everyone's name and you'll just say here when we call your name. Uh, Kevin? Here. Connor? Here. Robin? Here. NJ? Here. Um, Judith is not here right now. She'll be here soon. Uh, Edgar is absent. Angela? Here. Jordan? Jordan, are you, I see your name. Are you here? Okay, NJ, I think that we'll mark Jordan as not having arrived yet until we hear confirmation from her, okay? Oh, wait. Jordan, I see you've gone off mute. Are you here? Okay. All right, I think we'll move on to see if maybe she's having some technical difficulties. And, okay. and then, um, Carrie, before we continue, just for um, <clears throat> correction on um, the pronouns, so Jordan is they, them, just so we address them. Oh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you, NJ, I appreciate that. And then ex officios, we've got Leanne. Here. Present, and Michael. Hi. I believe that's everybody that's in attendance right now. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to try Jordan one last time? They are unmute, unmuted. Jordan, are you with us? Maybe Hello? if you turn her camera on, she could wave. Hello? I think, I think we heard that, Jordan. You're here yeah. with us? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry, I can hear. I just can't speak. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. Um, okay. And I think we've called everybody that's here. So the next thing would be approval of the agenda. Okay. Um, so thank you, everyone. Once again, uh, welcome. So we're going to follow um, the agenda items um, as they are presented to us. So second item is approval of the agenda. 
So please refer to the document that was sent uh, by Kerry. Uh, do we have any objection to the agenda as it was written? Okay. Would you like me to make a motion to approve it? As Angela, is? that would be fantastic. Thank you for offering. So Commissioner Wilson made a motion to approve the agenda. Do we have a second? So I second to approve it. Any discussions or comments on that? I don't see any, so I think we're ready to vote on it. Michael, good evening. It's good to see you. <laughs> and and um, for Kevin and Robin's sake, during Zoom meetings, we do have to call out everybody's name. When we move to back in person, it will just be a simple, you know, I. Um, but for the purpose of this, NJ, do you want me to go ahead and call for the vote again? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, Kevin? Aye. Connor? Aye. NJ? Aye. Robin? Aye. Judith has not arrived yet. Okay. Uh, Angela? Aye. And Jordan? Okay. So the motion passes. The agenda has been approved. Thank you very much. So um, we are looking at agenda item number three and Carrie, I don't think I can hold it anymore. Is this the time where we finally, finally welcome our new commission members? Yes, absolutely. There is, um, yes, this would be the most appropriate time to do so. <laughs> okay. So if it's okay, I, um, so they're going to introduce themselves, but I, I feel like letting loose a little bit because this has been so long in the making. So to everyone listening, uh, please help us welcome Kevin Baker and Robin Muhammad. It is such a joy to have you join the commission. I'm so um, honored and, and really grateful that you're giving of your time to serve our community in that way. And also, um, I'm just going to be a bit personal here. I've been dreaming of this moment for a very long time. So I'm very glad that you um, you are with us. Would you please introduce yourself? I will start with Robin. Please, um, again, state your name, share anything you would like us to know um, about you. And, and if you, you wouldn't mind one thing that you're, you're looking forward to um, working on a change you're looking forward to implementing uh, via this commission. Thank you all again. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm Robin Muhammad, and I'm a UC Davis alum. I'm also reintroducing myself to Northern California and Davis specifically. I'm an associate professor of history at Ohio University, and I'm here on an extended sabbatical doing research. And that just wasn't enough work for me. I uh, heard about the um, call for commissioners, and this was one uh, top of my list uh, to serve. And so I'm, I'm pleased, honored, and excited to be doing all of the work, um, to engage with all the work that the commission is involved in and taking a look at the agenda and the minutes. I can see it's an ambitious and worthwhile one. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it and a pleasure to meet you all um, now and, and in the future. Thank you very much, Robin. Again, welcome to the commission. We look forward to working with you. Kevin, you have the floor. Yes, good evening. It's nice to meet everyone virtually. I'm Kevin Baker. I use he, him pronouns. And I am um, have lived in Davis uh, since 2014. Um, I moved to Sacramento in 1999 and um, lived there for um, a number of years. Um, and um, I recently retired um, at, from work as an attorney and a policy advocate, most recently with uh, the ACLU California Action, which is the policy arm of the ACLU in California. And I am very much looking forward to just trying to contribute to the work that you all have been about um, and our predecessors before us. Thank you very much, Kevin. It's wonderful to have you with us. Um, 
Is there any um, comment or from our commissioners? Any words you would like to share at this time before we listen to the staff report? Okay. So we are a very shy crowd tonight. Um, just so you know, Robin and Kevin, we we, tan we can be very talkative, we're warming up. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome again. So Carrie, I think we, um, you know, you're just going to lead this section. So we're ready for announcements and um, we're going to start with you if it's okay. And then, um, you know, move to commissioners and then to uh, the liaisons who are here with us tonight. Absolutely. Thank you, NJ. Um, this is our period of time where we really just do do brief announcements if there's an upcoming event or something um, of, of importance that somebody would like to announce. Uh, as part of your packet, you had an informational sheet on the Hate Free Together movement. That is something that I imagine will come before the HRC from um, with some direction from City Council at some point, but it is um, something that the city, the county, and the campus are working together on to really encourage a, a hate-free community based, you know, um, coming off of our Healthy Davis Together. So it's a hate-free together movement. And uh, Jenny Tan, our um, communications director for the city of Davis, has been working very closely on that. She is out of town right now, but she'd like to come probably to a meeting in January to give you guys a more thorough overview of what's going on and some potential uh, next steps. So I don't have a lot to share, but I did want to make sure that we acknowledge this important um, Thing that's that's happening and provide you the basic information so in your um, as I mentioned in your staff report you had the um, a little informational sheet and the resolution that was put together with campus and um, the city and the county so I, I probably won't be able to answer a ton of questions as I said Jenny will will look forward to coming and doing a more thorough presentation on a regular agenda item for you but wanted to put that out there um, thank you very much. Is there anything else you wanted to share with us before we turn to the commissioners? No, that was my only announcement. Okay. Well, um, thank you again. So <clears throat> um, now I'm, I'm turning to, you know, to the rest of the commission. Is there any announcement uh, that you'd like to share with the community at this time? Piece of good news, an event, maybe upcoming event or past event that you believe was significant. So also, Carrie, I would like to acknowledge for the record that Judith um, is with us now. She has joined us. Thank you. Hello, Judith. Welcome. Hi, Judith. So <clears throat> no. hello. Hello. <laughs> so while you are maybe gathering your thoughts, um, again, this is public knowledge, but I, I wanted to on behalf of the commission, and I hope commissioners, it's okay, but I want to welcome our new council member, Bapu Vaitla. So I don't know if he will be um, on this commission. We normally have two council members who, um, when they can, attend our, our meetings. So I don't know yet if Bapu uh, will be attached to this commission, but um, I just you know, wanted, for the record, wanted to let him know that the Human Relations Commission is welcoming him, and we look forward to working with him given the possibility. Um, something else, um, if it's okay, <coughs> Carrie, I, I will try to remember to send you an email. I got an email from Yolo County staff uh, regarding a listening session, um, regarding families that have had to deal with um, social services, not social services per se, but the the department that um, takes care of children uh, wellness and, and might have had at some point the children being taken away from them uh, for some reason. So the county is um, hosting listening sessions on December 20th. And um, so, and I, I'll have to double check, but um, sometimes they do have a compensation plan for, to, um, for people's time to just kind of like account for that. So uh, would it be okay, Carrie, if I send you information on that to just um, share with the commissioners or do you want me to do it myself? You can feel free to send it to me and I'll forward it on. Okay, thank you. And I think that in terms of um, announcements and, and CD happenings, uh, that is it for me. 
something else just because it's popping up in my head. Um, the Davis Third, which basically is the local platform newspaper that has um, basically um, information on everything happening in Davis in terms of events and and also it's being it's in print again. It's available in print again, so you'll find it at your local. Uh, stores downtown and in other places as well as online so I figured I'd let the word out um, and then last but not least um, just again to share with the public the Nutcracker uh, which is a Davis tradition takes place everywhere it's a production that is put together with over a hundred children <clears throat> so this year it is happening um, virtually it was pre-recorded and it's available online and the link is on uh, the CD's website. If you go to the Davis Enterprise, there's an article on it and as well as the link. So they've made modifications to show sensitivity um, in regard to diversity and, and inclusion and, and, and also you, you might be able to spot those modifications. Um, if you, you look at the production, uh, it's lovely and they did a Wonderful job. So this is all I have to share. Do we have any announcements um, from other people? Okay. So um, Michael, you are our liaison with UC Davis. Is there anything you'd like us to, to know um, before we dive into the agenda items? Uh, nothing new to report. Um, the only thing I was going to mention was what Carrie shared um, earlier. So nothing else beyond that. Okay, um, thank you. So Carrie, um, we don't have any members of the public tonight, at least not right now. So I'm going to skip the part where I ask if we have public comments, I guess, or should I still do it for the record? I'm going to follow agenda item number four, but I'm asking when we're dealing with agenda um, items that are not um, labeled public comments. Yeah, yeah, I think you can just do it for the record that we will okay. state that there are no members of the public in attendance right now. Okay, so we have moved on to agenda item number four. Uh, there are no members of the public at this time, so we are moving on to agenda item number five, which um, is approval approval of the November 17 uh, minutes. So um, <clears throat> is there any request for modification to the minutes of last month's meeting as they were recorded? So I don't see any reaction. Will someone like to make a motion to approve the minutes from last month? And as a reminder, if you did not attend the meeting, you're invited to, to abstain. I think that's usually how it goes. Yeah, and um, in my checking with the city clerk, we're just moving, we're approving them being passed forward. You're, um, so everybody is welcome to vote on those. Oh, okay. I, I think based on the attendance right now, we probably wouldn't have enough people to who are at the last yeah. meeting because it was a very low meeting. So if everybody would like to, I mean, it's up to you, of course, okay. but but my understanding from the clerk is it's um, it's an approval to just move them forward as opposed mm -hmm. to approving that they're for their accuracy. Okay. And Thank I would like to, make, like to make a motion for moving them forward. And that was Commissioner Wilson for the record. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. That's Commissioner Plank. Any mm -hmm. comments, discussion, feedback on that before we put it to a vote? I don't see any. Um, Carrie, we're ready to vote. Thank you. Sure. Kevin? Kevin, would you like to vote or abstain? Since you were <laughs> Forgive, not here. Me. Forgive <laughs> me. I'm sorry. I was on mute. Uh, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Connor? Aye. Uh, NJ? Aye. Robin? Aye. Judith? Aye. Angela? Aye. And Jordan? Jordan, we can't hear you. I think they keep trying to, oh, there we go. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you for raising your hand. We'll take that as a confirmation. Okay. Um, so the motion passes unanimously. We um, 
<coughs> now uh, looking at agenda item number 6A, uh, which is a public forum on recent hate incidents in the Davis community. So as a reminder to members of the public who will be listening in um, to this meeting, the Human Relations Commission provide an opportunity to discuss and receive public input on recent hate incidents in the Davis community. I'm opening the floor to um, my fellow commissioners. Is there anything that you would like to report or share in regards to um, this topic? And as a reminder, this is a, a standing item every month. So some months you may have more to talk about than others. So, I am personally not aware of any hate incidents uh, happening since uh, the last meeting. Uh, the only, I think, significant piece of news I, I want to share was already shared by you in the staff um, report, which is the uh, Head Free Together, which is an effort between the city of Davis, Yolo County, and UC Davis. Um, you know, regarding actions that could be taken to address the hate incidents, but also to provide resources for the community. So that is something that is in the making. A resolution was passed. Um, and then they, I think there is already a link uh, for community members to provide input and um, and feedback and, and so, so um, yes, the document is made public. Kevin, I see your hand. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, NJ. Just a really quick question. Um, I'm wondering, um, just in my ignorance, whether um, when we, you, you noted, for example, that you hadn't recently been aware of incidents since the last meeting, and I, that's um, my, the case for me too. I guess I was just wondering, how is it that we would learn of such things other than through media reports? Is there any source of information from the city or the county or the you know, district attorney's office or um, anyone who collects that information and provides it to us, or is it just sort of word of mouth? Thank you. So, thank you for asking, and and other people will jump in if you know if they they decide to, and I'll get us started in answering. So, they are from my um, personal experience several sources of information. So, the most obvious one is our local newspaper. So, it's the Davis Enterprise, and then you have some online publications like the Davis Vanguard, the Davis site. Um, and if I'm forgetting one, uh, please forgive me and, and, and correct me. And then also <clears throat> um, some online platforms. So next door, which is organized by neighborhoods, um, usually information is also being shared um, and, and sometimes can be, you know, easily verifiable. Another thing is there is a police log that's available online. I think it's on the city's um, website as well. So sometimes if one is curious, there is a recording of the incidents that have happened and they're, um, they are shared by category. Um, so the last time I checked, I didn't really see anything of, of that nature. I don't know um, if there is a specific category for hate incidents. Um, I, I don't remember how that would be categorized, but I know there is something about some something happening and violence is is a part of is a component of it. And then the last um, other source is, uh, like you mentioned, the word of mouth. You know, uh, they could be either people coming to you or a friend of a friend and, you know, and so on. And then I'm not on campus anymore. And I know that UC Davis also has several um, channels when it comes to that. And Jordan, I understand that you want also react to Kevin's question. Um, can, are you able to unmute yourself? Because your hand is raised, yeah. Hello? Yes, we can hear you, thank you. Hi, I was just um, unmuting to say that I have to head out now. Um, so apologies everyone that I have to go early, but um, welcome to our new members and I'm excited to see you at future meetings. So Kevin, I'm gonna turn back to you. Do you think that answered your question a little bit? Or do you see some... Um, some zones, you know, some um, areas that maybe could benefit from further clarification. 
No, you've been very responsive. Thank you, NJ. I was just kind of curious if there was any kind of, um, you know, sort of news sort of source that, or, you know, source of information that people were looking to. Um, mm -hmm. You've clarified it. And thank you for also letting me know about the police log. Um, of course, the district attorney's office is often involved in these incidents too, because as you indicated, they can be, um, they can reach to the level of criminal activity um, or they receive reports of various kinds. Um, and along with the sheriff's office, I suppose, but um, that I'll have to do some further looking, that, that, but I really appreciate the information. Thank you. Of course, you're welcome. Angela, would you like the floor? Yeah, just um, to let the new members know that I am on the um, community advisory board for the police department. We met yesterday and there are often discussions that come up. Well, there's always a discussion that comes up about what's going on in the community. And I'm not, I don't know the details because I did not write them down, but I know that Chief Patel has been invited to speak at some forum um, statewide dealing with um, hate crimes in Davis. And if I get more information, I will share them with everyone because I don't know what the date is or anything. But if you have other questions, period, please let me know things that anybody would like me to take to those meetings. Thank you. We appreciate the the um, offer, Angela. Thank you. Um, I know I, for one, will be very happy to hear more about what's being done and and even you know some of the the events that are happening. I know they've been hosting also some sessions. Um, one more thing I wanted to add, um, Kevin, and I'm I'm not speaking on on her behalf. Um, Kate Snow is the climate officer at the Davis uh, Joint Unified School District. And as such also, she's one of the first people always to know um, when there are some um, tensions related to uh, to that type of things, whether it's hate incident or, you know, other forms of racial tension. So, and, and DGSD, um, last I, I check, also has a um, strong structure in place to be able to spot it, monitor it, create a safe environment for students to, uh, you know, to, to report. Um, so just something to know. I'm mentioning that because if you ever have questions on that, she's someone you can talk to as well when it comes to the younger student population. Okay. So any additional, <clears throat> excuse me, comment or um, on this topic on a recent hate incidents? Okay. Um, do we have any public comments? We don't have any member of the public in attendance at this time. So um, we are going to close the public comments. We are now moving on <clears throat> to agenda item 6B. Um, so title Human Relations Commission Appointment to Campus Council on Community and Diversity. And please refer to the attachment that was, uh, or that is your agenda package. And NJ, if okay with you, I think that we'll have uh, Michael talk about this item and this opportunity that is before the commission. I do know that this is something that, and um, Edgar's been also very, very interested in participating in, um, but he didn't want to go through this item last month because there, uh, Michael wasn't able to be here and there also was very few commissioners. So uh, just know that um, while Edgar can't join us tonight, he's also very, very, very interested in, um, in being involved if, okay. if that should be the decision of the commission. Fantastic. Thank you for the, the reminder. So, Michael, you have the floor. And um, as a form of introduction, would you mind reminding us all uh, what this is about? Like, just give us again an, an overview. And then, you know, we all ears. And again, thank you for joining us tonight. Sure. Um, the Campus uh, Council on Community and Diversity is a standing advisory committee to the chancellor. Uh, that focus on DEI topics and issues. Uh, the council is comprised of uh, DEI practitioners um, across UC Davis, and the history has included a community member, um, a Davis community member to be a part of the council. That position has been vacant for uh, a very long time. 
um, because of the uh, delay of the appointment, potentially uh, someone from uh, the Human uh, uh, Relations Commission. Um, that position has been filled by a um, representative uh, from the International House. Um, so we definitely will go through the process again at the end of this academic year for um, a representative, uh, potentially from a Human Relations Commission to be a part of that council uh, for the 23-24 um, academic year. Typically, it's a two-year appointment, but um, that is not uh, set in stone. So uh, the Human Relations Commission can certainly use that as a guideline um, uh, for potentially uh, nominating a representative from HRC. Thank you very much. That's um, for me very all very exciting. So I, I need some clarification though. Um, so I understand what's happening on the side of UC Davis, but I'm trying to be clear on what you know, um, you need from us tonight. Are we appointing a liaison tonight or do we discuss uh, the liaison's work and setting guidelines? Which which one is it? So I think um, we can probably table this for a later uh, mm -hmm. conversation when um, we are beginning to uh, look at the council roster for um, fall of 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, into the next academic year. So I think it may be uh, more prudent to uh, table this for um, discussion sometime in the spring. Okay, thank you. And one last question on my end. Uh, I thank you for the summary that you, you gave, but could you be a bit more specific? Because uh, I'm guessing you've been in that position before, so maybe you've seen um, you had at least you have other appointees at least from the international house. So could you help us get a, a clear picture on practically um, what that looks like and what that position entails from someone serving on the commission? Um, so I think you mentioned you might have mentioned you know uh, the frequency or the pace of the meetings, but what what how will a commissioner um, serve? What type of advice or um, information or contribution? Uh, Sure. So uh, a member a member of the council would attend um, between five and six meetings a year um, or throughout the academic year. Um, during that meeting, uh, there would be an opportunity uh, to share information in terms of collective efforts that focus on DEI, um, opportunities to partner with the campus and uh, the greater community on um, a number of community engagement opportunities. Um, there is the opportunity for the member to also um, help in choosing the topic for um, our campus community book project. So really it is um, a way to um, find ways to collaborate uh, between uh, the university and also the city and explore opportunities in terms of how um, we strengthen um, the connection when it comes to community engagements that very much focus on DEI. Thank you very much. That, that was it for me. It's a very clear picture. Mm -hmm. um, commissioners, you have question for Michael, um, feedback? Michael, I've added this to our long range calendar in March. Does that sound right or would it be later than that? Perfect. Okay. Perfect, yeah. Okay. It's just the, the current council only has three meetings left, and it wouldn't make sense um, to entertain uh, a new member given that we're almost through with uh, with the um, the remainder of the standing meetings for the academic year. So scheduling this for discussion in March, as far as identifying who potentially could um, fill that space to represent the community. Um, would be uh, would be ideal to to do so um, in the right. spring. Thank you so much. And um, and as Michael mentioned, there was a delay. I have mentioned to you guys before, it was totally my fault. I'm so sorry. It just literally fell off my to-do list. Um, the good news is that council has approved this ongoing, so we can just, you know, reappoint as necessary as, as long as the um, campus is as interested in, you know, having this appointment. So we'll be good to go from there. Yeah. <laughs> I think moving forward, there are a lot of different ways in terms of how um, the campus and, and the city at large, especially with large scale um, uh, commemorative events, 
Juneteenth, for example, so it would be very, very important for um, uh, HRC to be represented in that council. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. Uh, we probably, um, NJ, is this a good time for me to move to official public comment to see if there is any? Yes, thank you. Okay, so we still do not have any um, members of the public in the audience, so I'm, we're closing the public comment section on this item. So moving on to agenda item 6C, we're going to discuss the Dr. Martin Luther King celebration. So people on the subcommittee in charge of organizing that celebration are um, Judith Plank, Commissioner Plank, and Commissioner um, Gorman, as well as myself and Jim Vondo. So a quick update. <clears throat> so the program for the celebration is being finalized. It's going to be a mix um, of um, public speakers, uh, very short segment sections, and also uh, performances. And so basically we are in the process of finalizing and getting confirmations from all the people we have invited. You will be, you will see <clears throat> on stage um, several of our residents uh, who are either community um, leaders um, of all ages, because there's also going to be people under the age of 18 um, performing for us. And <clears throat> excuse me, and then a couple of people also from uh, Sacramento, but who um, have done much good in the community via their uh, civic efforts. So um, another thing as a reminder, the celebration this year, I mean, next year to 2023 will be hybrid. So it will be in person. In person, it's happening at the Veteran Memorial Center. And it will also be streamed online. And we are thanking the Davis Media Access for providing the service. Judith and Connor, is there anything you would like to add to what I just shared? I'm good. I'm not going to speak a lot tonight because I have a sick cat and he's affected by my loud voice. So, but I will say, do we want to give more specifics? Um, because you gave me some amazing, amazing, um, you gave me some amazing information on the, on the messenger. Um, <laughs> do, do you want, well, let's well, see here. Do so we what is more specifics yeah. about with those notes that you sent me? Uh, one thing I can share, so because with the the lineup that you saw, there there are some confirmations that I'm, that I'm waiting I'm waiting on. So my idea was <clears throat> to get back to Kerry once all the confirmations are in, and what will happen is that there's going to be a press release as soon as you know uh, it's available. So um, what what specifics were you thinking of? Um. <laughs> Because it sounds like there was something that got you very happy. So I, was I could read everything off, but you said you have some confirmations happening. Um, yeah. No, I'm, I'm good. I just, there were a lot of good names. and But like you just said, you need some mm -hmm. confirmations first. To, so before you I, I, okay, so I can, I can share and, and I want to acknowledge there is um, a member of the audience who joined us. <clears throat> I want to share. So something that is, is being um, considered it's usually the Martin Luther King, uh, Dr. King celebration ends with a march. Um, so if that happens next year, it will be from the Memorial Center to um, Central Park. So one thing that is dear to my heart uh, is that we invite some local organizations that are upholding Dr. King's legacy. And I'm thinking of the ACLU, the Yolo County chapter, I'm thinking of the NAACP, <clears throat> you know, and, and several others. I would love for our community to have a chance to engage with those organizations and consider supporting them or joining in on the effort of volunteering. Uh, there is a theme also every year <clears throat> when we're celebrating him. So uh, the theme for next year uh, will be it takes community, you know, kind of like riding on the popular saying it takes a village. So in this case, it takes the community. And the reason behind that choice is because we want to, um, as we're celebrating Dr. King's, um, I want to say the change that he he created, that he brought in our, in our society, 
uh, we want to put out a reminder that he was able to do all the work he did because he has a community. He was surrounded. It really was a community effort. It wasn't just him alone. And, and carrying on that legacy today and how that relates to, to us today in this 21st century, it's the same for us in Davis. It takes all of us to continue to, um, you know, make sure that everyone is, everyone's right is being uh, protected and that also people know their rights um, and that, you know, we see about that justice is accessible to, to all and so on and so on, standing up for injustice, of course. But again, this is something that takes all of us. So that's a message we're hoping to share also as we're celebrating how far we've come. Is that is that good, Judith? <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <clears throat> and like I said, um, Carrie, as soon as um, several of the other confirmations we're waiting on are here, I'll send you the program. Thank you. And um, NJ, after you and I spoke, I think we met on this last Friday, if I remember correctly, I did get a message from Jeff Shaw of Davis Media Access this week. Mm -hmm. And they are still, they're really, really wanting to make the hybrid option work. Um, he said they had done some initial testing that went really well, but it sounds like some further testing um, may still have a little bit of complications, but we'll, we'll persevere and, and try and move forward uh, figuring all that out. Um, I don't speak IT language at all. <laughs> so um, we're, we're going to loop in Joseph and see what he thinks about uh, being able to make it all happen. Okay. So we're, um, they're definitely very, very interested in doing it and are working hard to, to make it happen. But. Thank you for the update. I'll try to get in touch with them as well. Um, and with Jeff specifically, maybe to uh, at least set a date for January um, so that we go together to the center. I have a meeting or an email from Jeff that I need to respond to. So I'll loop you in on that one. Okay, that sounds good. Thanks. So um, Connor, did you want maybe to react or since you're also on the organizing committee? I mean, I think you about covered it. Um, I did contact Decarcerate Sacramento, uh, but they were busy opposing the proposed jail expansion, uh, and they have not gotten back to me since then. And it sounds like we we mostly have a solidified program with other speakers, but if someone from that needs to drop out or anything, um, we could definitely potentially contact Decarcerate Sacramento as maybe like a backup speaker or something. Thank you. Um, and then also, and, and I'm, I'm sharing this also with, um, we have one member of the public with us, but just as to whoever will be listening to this, if there is an organization you like to, to highlight and maybe they have a literature that is available, um, you know, I if I may carry ask them to maybe email you if it's okay. Okay, um, so let us know and, um, and we, you know, it will definitely be taken into consideration in sharing it with uh, the community on the day of. Thanks again. So any other questions, comments, reactions from the, the commissioners? Do you want to move to public comment and then come yeah. back to this? Mm -hmm. or? Yeah, let's, let's do that. So um, let's open it to public comment. Welcome to the member of the public with us. Um, you're invited to share a comment if you'd like to. Uh, you have three minutes to do so if it's the case. I don't see any hand raised. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're taking that item back to the floor. Um, <clears throat> last call on the commissioners before we move on to the next item. Okay, so I think this concludes our time on agenda item 6C on the Dr. King celebration. So we're moving on to agenda item 6D, Thong Hai Hun Awards. Um, and that one, Angela, are you the one uh, taking the lead on it? Yes, but Connor, please jump in anytime. So when Connor and I spent time looking at the old process, we had way more questions than we were able to come up with answers as to what all the different criteria and what um, all the different questions, the forms that were being filled out were kind of confusing. So basically, Connor was the one who came up with the idea of having just the three awards, one being um, 
over 18, under 18, and in a community involvement. And then what we did from there is we looked at the fact that what are the specifics? And if, Terry, if you could just go up just a little bit. So we can see, so there's the categories under 18, over 18, oh. and community organization. And I'd like to see the next section. Down more? Is that right there. Yeah, I'm sorry, down, not up. So basically what we recognize is that there was the way the old form was written, that there was almost a limitation as to what could fall under each category. So what we tried to do is come up with all the different rationale that potentially one could meet under any of those three, promoting civil rights, promoting positive human relations in a multicultural and diverse community, improving the quality of life in the city of Davis for residents and vis visitors through health promotion, human services, housing, education, employment, cultural awareness, peace means of contract, conflict resolution. And that certainly is not everything. And it, if any of you have come up with other ideas or other areas that you think would be beneficial, um, Connor has suggested an online application. And part of the other thing that we recognized was that when a person did nominate someone, they weren't providing in any information as to who they were. So we're not asking for a lot of information, but at least contact and availability of who they are, email address, et cetera. And um, basically looking at the fact that just with the three categories, that still doesn't mean that we couldn't have multiple people that would be nominated and approved under those categories. Honor, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, so I I do just want to note that I think someone else initially came up with the idea of having those three categories. Um, <laughs> and also um, for the organization, uh, I think one question I still have is, would this be would this be any organization regardless of the age of the members? Because with individuals, there's obviously clearly like, distinctions between age but with organizations with different members um there is there is like a question there so as far as i'm aware this would be any organization whether like a high school club or a community group or a uc davis club um but that that's one thing where like i i still think some clarification could be useful like depending on what the commission thinks is best in that regard um but besides that yeah I, I think this is definitely like a good direction to go in and then certainly we could decide uh to accept more than one like award in a given category but i do think this is uh this is a good direction um and i also do really like the idea of a submittable form uh, i know gloria talked about that uh at one point as well um, but yeah, I think having to like, like attach a document to an email is, is a like barrier that some people, especially, uh, the youth, um, might not be as like interested in and having a directly submittable form on the website, uh, would be much, uh, simpler. Yeah, I think the old, the old form of also had a situation where it was kind of discriminating whether a person was in school when we talked about, well, what happens if somebody isn't in school? So we did try to open it so that it's more broad based and would allow. The only thing we also talked about that is not posted anywhere is confirmation that these individuals are truly in Davis or the organizations are truly Davis organizations. But that would be something that we would have to maybe do some research on. But Carrie, in your history, has anybody who has not really been um, a Davisite or an organization in Davis ever been nominated? Um, yes, and it was, yes. <laughs> well, I actually have a question about that, but it was more regarding the community organization. So, I, excuse me, I understand that um, the criteria is, um, the criteria is, you know, Davis are uh, Davis centric, but I'm wondering about some organizations that are active in Davis. 
And might, you know, um, when it comes to where they're registered at, um, it might not be in Davis. I'm thinking of one nonprofit, for example, that operates in Davis five days out of seven, um, but is actually registered in Solano County, right? So um, <clears throat> because it benefits the Davis community and they, they spend so much time here, will they be eligible like an organization like that? And I can think of a few others. So um, do you have any thoughts on that or? Never even came up, but under where it says a few examples for guidance, oh wait, wait a minute, community organizations be made up of um, members of any age and be supportive of the Davis community. And I'm just adding these right now as you're talking, you right. can certainly edit them. Okay. Would that answer your question? Because that way we're not necessarily saying it would have to be, um, it would have to be sanctioned though, but mm. just. Yeah, I, I think, yes, I think that um, that addresses it. Thank you. I think it's much, this is much easier. I mean, and I know I was, um, when when the last time we went over and did a lot of work on on looking at the form, I was brand new on the commission and didn't really know what was going on, but was very impressive, impressed with the amount of work that had gone into this. But I think with the work with Connor, the both of us decided that the easier that we can make it, maybe it would open it up more broadly. The other issue we came up with is basically how do we put this out in the community? And I don't think either one of us had a real clear understanding of how this does get um, disseminated in the community. Mm -hmm. um, Connor, I I see your hand. So you you have the floor and then um, I react. I'll write down what I'm thinking so I don't forget. Connor, we're listening to you. Thank you. Yeah, so I just wanted to mention that in terms of like relationship to Davis, um, I think there certainly should be some, but definitely that's like not a like strict or always like clear thing. So I think that's somewhere where it would be up to the commission to decide if something is related to Davis enough that we think it would qualify. But I certainly don't think it should be like limited to like Davis residents or like organizations that are registered in Davis. Like I think uh, like anyone who has significant interaction with Davis or members of the Davis community uh, could be part of this. There's also the like Joint Unified School District, which extends beyond Davis as a city. So I think that it would be basically the discretion of the commission and eventually the council too. Um, but like certainly, uh, I think there should be a more expansive uh, definition and not limit it to like direct residents or even like direct like workers or residents because it could go even broader than that um thank you and as we were, you were talking i just was um when i asked that question i was also thinking of uh, schools clubs so not just the USD, but uc davis is an example where you know uc davis is not in davis like they had they are their own territory uh, but there are some clubs that are also very active so again you know um just throwing it out there um <clears throat> Carrie, when when you're able to? Yes. Uh, I was wondering if you could scroll down uh, just when you when uh, the part that has examples, significant efforts in. I just want to see it again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Thank you. I'm certainly open to other suggestions. So. <clears throat> I'm wondering, okay, and please call me out if I'm I'm being too, um, I'm, I'm going, you know, too deep with that. I'm looking at promoting civil rights, but I'm also wondering, I'm wondering if you will equate that with, um, you know, um, civic engagement. And what I mean by that, for example, I'm specifically thinking of um, efforts when it comes to voting and voters registration, <clears throat> and I'm thinking of some part of our community, and I'm thinking of, you know, our senior 
community, for example, you know, thinking of access uh, when, you know, around election time and things like that. There are some groups or people who are getting organized and making sure that, you know, everyone has a chance to, to get the choice registered. And, and also, um, we haven't really on this commission talked much lately about what civic engagement looks like or how that can be more highlighted in the community. But I was wondering if that award will recognize that. So I think my question was whether you welcome a distinction <clears throat> or if you think that the term civil rights encompass that encompasses that. I don't think we really thought about it. I mean, and that's okay. why I said, you know, certainly open with Connor and I met on this and recognized that we were probably going to be limited in our scope. So um, I think that adding this is important. And I think the more that we add, even though we're just making this a list, the point of the list is so that an individual that wanted to nominate someone would be able to figure out that yes, that person fits in some criteria. And I think we did put somewhere that, I think up above it says that this is not, not just limited to, um, if I remember correctly, we had something in there, mm -hmm. but no, the, the more information that we have in here, I think, it hopefully the intent is to make it easier for someone to nom nominate someone and feel free to nominate them. Thank you very much for clarifying, Kona. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, like certainly we don't want like a huge list because people are not going to like read that, but definitely finding that balance and figuring out how to word things in a way where it gives people the like sort of examples that they can like kind of go off of, um, which some people could use, um, but at the same time makes it really clear that it is uh, not limited to that and also tries to make those relatively broad if we can like work things in a way that does that. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the, you know, also adding to the, the context here. And Kevin, you have the floor. Thanks, NJ. Just a real quick question, um, and maybe a, maybe a comment on your uh, observation about voting rights. I, I think voting rights absolutely, or voting voter participation, absolutely is within the ambit of civil rights. Um, but I think it's it's useful to be as um, broad um, as possible, as others have kind of noted. I was just my question is just um, whether there um, is in the you know the the charter or the origin of this award. Whether there are any um, criteria that uh, are specified, um, I noticed, for example, that in the um, in the red line document, from which you know the uh, subcommittee kind of reworked this, and which I think it looks wonderful, um, that there were a lot of different kinds of um, examples that were given. And this is a more, more concise uh, version of it, I think, to make it more easily readable. Um, but I um, just, was just noting that there was that kind of greater explanation in the um, previous document. And I was just wondering if there are any, if there are any rules <laughs> that, um, that kind of uh, condition this. Now, I'm not sure I completely understand your question, but are you talking about the criteria that was listed before, like um, lifetime achievement? Well, where, where we ran into a problem is how do you define lifetime achievement? What if somebody is 18, but for three years they've done something remarkable? Their life is a shorter life than somebody who is greatly older. Um, and I think I think we tried to make sure that by doing what we did and making it the three, the under 18, over 18 and um, organization, that it would encompass all of those different um, criteria. Now, again, I am I've only been on this commission for this is, I think, my third or fourth year. Harry would be the one that has much more history on it. Um, and Harry, I mean, with the information that you have, do you feel that there is anything that we have left off from the original that we could be adding to make it um, 
more broad based is what I think, Kevin, you're talking about, right? Um, I'm happy to share just sort of a little bit of history and how we landed here uh, for anybody who's interested. You know, we've we've had all of those categories for a number of years. The commission has tweaked them over time and really been struggling to get application or nominations, not applications, nominations. Um, and then I think where where the struggle would come in is that there was this sort of need to place everybody in a specific category, you know, or if maybe there was only one nomination, they were automatically getting, um, you, you know, getting the award. And so by taking, at least the conversation was, but by maybe taking the specific categories out, it would open it up and allow for some sort of maybe, I don't want to say more meaningful, but, you know, more, um, more dialogue amongst all of the nominations to see and maybe some broader opportunities for the commission to decide, you know, where they should land, et cetera. I think last year we only had seven nominations and they've been um coming in slower and slower but kevin to answer your sort of broader question if there are any rules or anything this is an award from the civic uh, civic arts where did that come from i've done civic arts in a long time i must be tired um from the human relations commission and so you guys are able to um update the award categories and the and the um kind of uh qualities that you're looking for i mean obviously all the qualities are going to be you know somewhat the same but you're able to change up how the award is given it's it's really up to your decision sorry i feel like i'm very tired i'm not speaking well my apologies mm -hmm. you're doing beautifully yes <laughs> you're doing fantastic and and my, i'm right there in the trenches with you when it comes to um <laughs> i'm feeling tonight i uh, thank you for the explanation kevin would you like to react to what you heard um that was very helpful thank you okay Appreciative for all the work. Oh, and just yeah. while well, I, Angie, may I just a little real brief, just for you all to know as you're continuing with your conversation. Uh, so you guys actually, the amount of work you put into it this year is very significant and is is wonderful. You normally just see this at the January meeting, and you know, kind of give it give it your go ahead. So you will um, have this on the agenda again in January for a very last review so you guys you know you certainly could make any proposed edits tonight you don't have to make a final decision what we could do is um i can continue just editing this document with conversations that you're having tonight provide you with a clean form for you to review in january without all the red lines and then you you still at that point could make a decision you know like tweak it a bit if you want to or you could just decide to accept it and then we'll we'll roll it out so um my point being you you do have one more final time to look at it in january and i recognize this sort of uh, draft edited form might be a little bit more challenging to take it all in uh carrie thank you for that um additional piece of information i would like to add um that it's just a quick feedback on the format when you know we finalizing everything um, so I, I again, I want to thank Angela and, and Connor for all the work that you've done. It's very, it's impressive. I confess that when we we tackled on, you know, the all the things that maybe we could done or the process to make the nominations, you know, um, platform more friendly, more accessible to encourage a higher participation. I was overwhelmed, you know, uh, by the <clears throat> the. The form before was was good, but it's true that there was a lot of information, and it also took quite some time to to fill in in my experience. So again, thank you for um, all the ways you you know you find to make it simpler. I think what I want to add is um, I'm I'm guessing that the final format um, maybe somewhere at the bottom we'll be able to add links, especially if we're talking about a form uh, that people will be able to fill online. And um, and you know and they just click, click they just click on the submit button and then this is done. So what I mean by at the bottom and and links, I'm thinking of a link to past nominees, for example. Um, it's nothing new that already was. Um, you know people had a way of checking who had already been nominated, because we're trying to not have the same people two years in a row, of course, uh, getting the award. <clears throat> and um, and I don't know 
you know, if there, there is any other link that you think would be useful. The reason I, I first thought of the links was because Again, there are some people who are going to have more time to read or, or who, you know, some people are, they, they're very much into research and researching before they, you know, they, they nominate someone or they, you know, to get a better understanding. So I just want to make sure they have, you know, um, easy access in making that happen. If that makes sense to everyone. <laughs> Carrie, can that be done? I mean, I'm assuming that you have a list or there is a list. Yeah, it's all on the city's website. There's a Tong Hai Win page with information, okay. with some history and all of the recipients. And so we can certainly put the links there for people to see. Perfect. You know, there was one. Hold on, let me go down. I want to find it because I, I did have a question for you guys. Um. There was also this guidelines here that talked about the nomination process, which um, I can work based on some of the things you guys have said to clean it up a little bit. But one of the things I haven't heard you talk about changing or keeping the same is the previously you've had anybody that's been a, a recipient in the previous 10 years wasn't um, eligible for a nomination in the same category. Because you're eliminating the categories, I guess my two questions for you would be, mm. um, one, do you want to just have any recipient in the last 10 years as an eligible period? Do you want to totally eliminate that? Do you want to change it? I don't think we even thought about it, but the question comes up is why was the 10-year limitation placed there to begin with? That was something actually, I want to say fairly new, maybe in the last, I don't know, six or seven years or so. Um, I think that, you know, our community is kind of small and there were a lot of the same sort of nominations coming through and, and, and it was the hope that this would really expand people's thoughts on on nominating and there's so so many people that do amazing work but that but some people tend to be more in the public eye than others and so it was was a, a hope that we would really be able to um recognize so honestly i this it, connor you need to jump in here on that but so far as the selection process as written is fine with me um we did talk about the nominees should be residents of Davis, blah, blah, blah. But the problem we ran into was, was really how do you, you know, confirm that that is or is not. That was why we kind of hassled on that one. But so far as the selection process, we never even talked about that. So thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> sure, no problem. And I do, and I am now seeing that this says nominees should be nominees should be residents of Davis or have been active in work that has impacted the Davis community. So I think that gets at the okay. question from earlier this evening. Yes. Uh, but this here is definitely something that's gonna have to be, you know, either decided, as I said, um, because we're not having the categories anymore. So mm -hmm. either eliminating that. Well, it just needs to maybe be rewritten. Re <laughs> is there is that I mean, something we want to discuss tonight by the way the whether we keep the 10 years or not or should we table it for january we can table it but i mean again even if it were to stay on there the mm -hmm. only thing it would have to be is remove the same um category mm -hmm. yes you know, yeah. just rewrite that section of it uh -huh. and then uh kevin before i i you know give you the floor um, I'm wondering, I um, also would like to put up for, for edit or revision the line that comes after current voting commissioners are not eligible to receive an award. I would like for that line to be more specific because I, I understand the human relations, you know, commissioners not being eligible because we are the one deciding on who the, you know, um, the winners are. But if that line means that it it goes for all the commissions um, oh. of, of the city. I'm not sure that I, I agree with that. I think that other commissioners um, should also be able to be eligible because it's most likely going to be regarding work that is not necessarily related to the fact that they're serving on the commission. So again, this is a thought. Um, we're going to start with Kevin. We're uh, listening to you. And then Connor. Okay, thanks again. Just a, a question in my naivete. Um, the, the discussion around the category issue, just um, 
brought to my attention that this word category is used in other places, for example, in the preceding paragraph number four. Um, and it, it, if I'm reading the form correctly, it's, it looked to me like there are still categories. It's just 18 and organizational categories. So I wasn't sure whether in fact that really needed to be changed, but if it did need to be changed, it would have to be changed throughout the form, I guess. And then maybe just if I could one quick comment on the question that NJ just uh, mentioned with respect to the uh, current voting commissioners. Um, I guess I'm wondering if the, the um, literal meaning of that is that <clears throat> non-voting commissioners are eligible, but voting commissioners aren't, and whether that's the rule that you all are proposing. That's a good question. Um, Angela, did you want to react? Well, I was just going to say so far as the term categories, again, I think that Connor and I probably did not spend any time on this last half determining the selection process, et cetera, simply because we were presenting a process that we didn't even know whether it was going to be um, accepted. It would require cleaning up other sections of it. So, um, Kevin, thank you for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. And Kevin, I want to jump on what you said, um, just follow follow up. Um, I think that another way to make it clearer would, would um, be to specify um, who the non-voting commissioners are. And I explain what I mean by that. We have alternate commissioners and technically they're non-voting commissioners, unless on a particular night we need a vote because we're missing someone. So if, you know, because that's something that could happen, including on the night where we decide on on the you know who the the winners are. Um, I think it's simpler to just make it clear that let's say ex officio members um, are eligible. If I'm making sense, um, Connor, you have the floor. So I'm letting you all reflect on what I just shared. Uh, that's basically exactly what I was going to say. Um, I'm pretty sure the the idea there, or at least like my thoughts on it were that ex officio members um would be eligible but that like the the normal members of the hrc would not be and i would include the alternate in that even if they happen to not be voting on the night when it's decided i, I would still argue that they would not be eligible um but yeah uh, to me the the big distinction there especially for the hrc where we have a bunch of ex officios is ex officio versus like non ex officio um but yeah there certainly we could try to figure out wording that makes that clearer and i i also think that like this should be limited to the hrc like commissioners on other commissions i think should be eligible um and i i think it is more about that direct conflict of interest there and like there's a lot of people who are active in the community in various ways and that often includes uh joining a commission um so certainly if we decide that a particular commissioner like we think their commission work means maybe we'd rather give it to someone else then we can do that um but yeah i i don't think like precluding them from the beginning um makes sense for anyone except people with direct conflicts of interest Though I do remember that on the original form, there were, I, I think there was also something about like elected officials and I don't remember the details, but I remember that I was unsure of exactly what it was saying there um, around like elected officials or, or people in some other position that weren't mm -hmm. direct HRC members. So I, I thank you very much for, for, for your comment and because at least on my end, it adds more clarity. Regarding the elected officials, I'll defer to Kerry, um, you know, maybe in January we'll, we'll get a follow up on that. But my, my first reaction is that if we're talking about elected officials in the city of Davis, um, I'm not sure about their eligibility because um, again, correct me if I'm wrong or going off track here, but for me, there is a bit of a power, power dynamic in place, you know, like we, we uh, respond to them and I, I don't know I don't know if that is something that that comes into play I think 
I will it will make sense to me that if an elected official is also involved in an organization, that organization is available. I'll give an example. Um, our council member, Gloria Partida, <clears throat> we know she's one of the founders of the Davis Phoenix Coalition, which has done um, so much in the community with some life saving, you know, um, sharing some life saving tips on in various situations. So I, I, I believe the Davis Phoenix Coalition might be an organization that's eligible, even though our council member, former mayor, you know, is also involved with it. And, and personally, I wouldn't have any issues with that. Um, nominating one of the council members, for example, I, I don't know. I think, NJ, if I may, um, yeah. I, I, if I'm remembering correctly, that specific thing for elected officials, what, and I'm realizing maybe it's not very clear, was intended for council members because council ultimately approves that your recommendations for this award. So that okay. was getting, um, you know, could be become a little bit awkward. Yeah. Um, you know, it may be that you want to think about that language and if you want to change elected officials to, you know, um, local elected officials or, you know, city council members or something yeah. a little bit more clear, that's something that you could, mm -hmm. could certainly consider. Um, but I think that that was the intent behind the verbiage. Thank, thank you, Carrie. That's for me, it's just um, so much common sense. I, I will suggest, and again, we know this will be finalized in January, but just instead of elected officials, we, we say council members, Davis council members, again, just for the sake of clarity. Yeah, I think that um, should we decide to go with the uh, recommendation that Connor and I came up with, obviously this whole um, nomination process, selection process, et cetera, will need to be rewritten so that it correlates with, with what we have chosen. I think this initially, went with the old process. So it would need to be cleaned up. And that's, that's something that I can, you know, with your direction tonight, if, if you move forward with, with um, liking this direction, then I can go ahead and incorporate the changes more formally and also some of the words that we've added this evening and then try and go through the document and you know, reference the changes elsewhere. So we, you know, we certainly can do that. Um, you know, just with some general direction tonight, you don't need to take a vote on it unless you want to. And we can bring it back in January for, for final approval. Will we be able to have an online form to be filled out? I think so. I, you know, we've done enough now with our IES department in terms of other things. I, I'm certain that they would be happy to, to help us figure that out. Um, yeah, I just want to talk to them about that and hear what their their thoughts are. But I would I would imagine there'd be a way to do that. It certainly is done everywhere else. So, so okay, good. So I have one more um, topic on this. I'm hoping we explore because it's a, it's it's very important in my opinion. But I would like to, um, without putting you on the spot, ask Lian and um, you know Robin. Um, Judith, I understand you can't really speak much, but uh, would you like to react or is there any, um, do you have any thought you'd like to share with us on on this um, nomination process and reformatting and Yeah, uh, this is Leanne. It, yeah, I like the idea of uh, having fewer categories, the categories always seem to be an issue. So I think simplifying it makes sense. Thank you, Lian, uh, noted. And Robin, I see that you, uh, you turn on your screen, thank you. And you're muted, uh, just letting you know in case you were speaking to us. Uh, no, I think the, the revisions, um, including the ones suggested tonight, are, are excellent. Um, I think it's also important that what's put on the website or in the way in that we are getting the message out about this, that we perhaps amplify a little bit of the history. I remember coming here in 1983 as a first year student. And that was in the fall of 83. And this was a story that was out there, but um, it also wasn't talked about very much. And then 
So it's interesting to me to be here a couple of decades later um, and to know that that history had a profound impact um, on a community that in many ways was invisible to the campus in particular. And that's, that was from my perspective of being on campus. Um, so I, that would be my only contribution because I think it's uh, the trajectory is for a much more refined and precise um, call, call for nominations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I am reminded of something that uh, commission members, I can I don't remember who, but in the past also made the same comment in, about the importance to remind people, you know, who that young person uh, was and, and what happened to them, like you said, you know, the, the history um, around it. Thank you. So Kerry, I know that you took note um, of that. And, and I think that is definitely something uh, we, we might need to, to look at probably in January again, in terms of, um, um, you know, <clears throat> where in the nomination form, I don't think it, I think it could be interesting to at least have a few lines on that. Um, I see it early at yeah, these awards are presenting in memory of the stabbing death of high school student Tong Hai Huin on May 4th, 1983. So, um, since you, we have access to that form, right? To that working document, uh, Carrie. I'm asking because I'm thinking of what Robin said, and I was wondering um, maybe for again back in January, if if that line, if Robin, let's say, think that on that form that will be okay, or should we add more? Just um, it's an open question, you know. Like I said, it's just food for thought at this point. So, and the, the last topic on, on this item, I, I would love for us to, to dive in um, a little bit on its um, outreach. So Angela asked us, how do we put it out there? You know, it's one of the questions that was asked and it's something <clears throat> that has been kind of like at the, the core of, of this commission, you know, how do we put the word out, not just about this award, you know, um, one of the issues we ran into is the fact that we only had seven nominations, but even to get to seven, it took us extending the deadline and trying to be more aggressive with, you know, how we did outreach. So I, I'm gonna be a little bit blunt here and, and kind in doing so, but I, I think that, um, we have a problem of struggling with meeting people where they are. Um, and I'm wondering if Carrie, maybe that's something to check with um, the appropriate staff in terms of what we can and cannot do. But I'm wondering if there are platforms that we have not yet thought of, of using, you know, um, when it comes to outreach, putting the word out, we are also relying on individuals, you know, people sharing um, about that. Uh, we it's on the website not everyone takes time to visit the city website to know what the letters is but again you know in terms of outreach is there something that we could do to maximize um, or amplify this message and and just make sure that we get as much participation as possible including from our students you know how do, do we let them know uh, Carrie if you don't mind me asking <clears throat> I, I think that we usually have a flyer right so, I mean, typically we would work with our communications team in the city, and, and I believe they're, they're typical methods of outreach, but certainly there's probably more we haven't thought of, are okay. to do, you know, obviously a, a press release that would go throughout through various uh, media sources, and then also through all of our social media platforms with a, a graphic design and some information. So that would be, of course, Facebook, Instagram, Nextdoor, Twitter. Um, you know, I think that's sort of their their common ways, but I know that they would be open to other ideas. I mean, something that the commission has talked about before is, you know, maybe tabling at farmer's market one of the Saturdays and and putting out the information that way, you know, and, and um, 
really talking to people and it would do two things, letting, you know, the members of the public know about the work of the HRC, which is great in so many ways, and then yeah. also being able to give a mm -hmm. sort of the specific item that you guys are seeking for right now. Um, mm -hmm. So I, you know, really we've got, I, I think our comms team would be very open to, okay. to other hearing and exploring other ideas. Thank you. Uh, so I think just a couple of ideas very quickly, and that's all I, I have to say on that. And um, you know, happy to hear more, or we can move on. But <clears throat> I'm hoping uh, for next year that we have a, a flyer with, you know, just um, you know, seeking nomination. Again, a reminder of what the award is about. But where I'm going with that is that the flyer will have a QR code that will lead directly to the to the form, uh, the application form. Um, and the reason I'm suggesting that is because then it is something, so we already, our subcommittee members put in all that effort to make the, the application and the nomination form as easy to use as possible, you know, uh, not, you know, a length of question that could be discouraging, et cetera. Now I'm thinking accessibility, you know, and exposure. Uh, flyer and QR code uh, can be left in schools, um, in classrooms, in um, various businesses over town. You know, they all have like many or have a community board. The QR code, people are used now to using the phone. And then on the spot, you know, they, they are people who could make also a nomination, you know, um, just right there. So uh, again, I'm thinking of ways to increase the uh, community engagement on that participation. Um, and then the farmer's market, yes, I remember that we talked about it, <clears throat> definitely. Um, and another thing, because I know our local community is very active on that platform. So you mentioned Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, our, our neighbors are incredibly active on Nextdoor. <laughs> so again, I'm not really on Nextdoor, but if um, we're able to, to have some volunteers who will be willing to just spread the word, um, you know, I think that the result could be interesting to monitor. So just a thought again, moving forward. And that, that's all I had to share, but um, any reactions from what you heard or on outreach strategy that maybe you'd like to share with us? I see Angela and Robin's hands up. Or Robin's hand was up. Maybe it went back down. <laughs> it's back. And Angela has their hands up. <laughs> well, Robin was first. Let her go. Uh, I was just going to add um, on the city's website, I think there is a, a photograph um, that goes along with this particular award. Um, it would also be nice, and if you know, possible through the IS, to have a soundbite, some voiceover with the picture, something, and this could be something for the commission to look at for other events so that people could sort of click on a button and listen to something, um, an audio. Um, so it's more accessible to people uh, in that way and uh, could be incorporated into social media and sent out that way. But I think um, some audio video kind of, um, packaging would be attractive to people along with the uh, QR code that uh, Chair Vondo mentioned. Yeah, all I all I was going to add would be um, making sure on the flyer that if we had a picture to, of him to place on the flyer, I think that would make it more personal. That was it. Yeah, thank you both. So I have one last thing to put out there. And then I'll go into hiding because Carrie might hunt me down for that and want to have a conversation with me. Um, so Carrie, again, I'm thinking accessibility. <clears throat> and, you know, again, our, our community, um, you know, we primarily um, all speak English and I know I acknowledge that, but we also have Davis residents um, to whom English is not the first language. And um, I'm wondering um, if, and I'm saying this with caution because I know I'm adding work to, to um, you know, people's workload. But I'm wondering if um, specifically on the form, it's possible to have it on um, when people click on on the link and are ready to fill the form. Also, <clears throat> including maybe some of the posts that we'll be putting out there. 
it will be possible to to make it accessible in one or two additional uh, different languages as well. And I'm I'm ready. Like if you have tomatoes you want to throw at me, I am ready. I'm protected by my computer screen. Go ahead. Yeah, I I absolutely you know for Cesar Chavez, we do uh, translate everything into Spanish, and we can we can talk about what other languages. I know that our website automatically will change to different languages, I, but I'm not familiar enough with how that works and if it would translate into being able to do that on the submittable, submittable form. So I'm happy to look in with that. I do agree with you. You know, it's it's incredibly important. And so um, I need to do a little bit of research to find out the different ways. But I do believe that we have a contract with a company that does some translation work for us. So we would want to identify which languages that we'd want it um translated into mm -hmm. and then I, I could take those next steps of figuring out you know how all that could be done and and where mm -hmm. we would have those done thank you that'll be fantastic i, I appreciate the the i'm not throwing thing. anything at you i, <laughs> I really <laughs> like the idea and i I, I think that kevin's had his hand up for a bit mm -hmm. yes kevin i think you're muted kevin i keep doing that um I just really wanted to endorse what NJ was saying. I um, really appreciate um, a couple uh, observations, one with respect to the language issues. Um, and, you know, I don't know if anybody <clears throat> it has any questions about what language um, accessibility might, might look like, but if you're looking for like the top languages in a particular area, that information is available in the second through the Secretary of State's office because it's tracked for voting purposes because there's a specific obligation to translate voting materials. Um, and so they and some of it is there are different types of obligations for different levels of language access. Um, so there's information there about um, broken down by subdivisions. Um, and then with respect to the other comment that NJ made about sort of meeting people where they are, I, I think that's really so important. And I'm wondering if, if we don't have um, lists of folks that or organizations that, you know, the city has worked with in the past on issues, because um, <clears throat> I think that it's the social media suggestions are absolutely appropriate. Um, but I'm wondering if just there's any more directed kind of communication at the folks who are out there working in the field, not that, you know, to, to sort of a personal email to everybody, of course, but, you know, are there kind of contact lists that, or, or you know, organizational entities that the city works with, or even the county works with on a regular basis that, you know, that it might be like, Hey, we want you to specifically to know about this because um, there's, there's great work done here in terms of um, identifying sort of the types of activities that um, people would be in, uh, likely to have engaged in that would um, qualify for them for this award. And I'm just thinking that we probably know who <laughs> that network is, right? Um, so I have a couple of thoughts in response to that yes and so I apologize I'm drawing a blank if we've done this like, um oh sorry I have, I have a question for you Carrie so do you want to hold that on your thoughts and I, I would like to suggest that we just take a, a, a quick break uh please um and then Carrie do you think you could share your, your thoughts afterward and I will yeah. stay online and I will engage with the commissioners but is that okay um yes that would be me needing a very quick break I'll be right back Thank you, NJ. Okay. Of course, thank you. I'm going to stop my video and I'll be back very quickly. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> Kevin, Kevin, I, I'm, I'm mulling over what you just said and I was um, writing down um, some suggestions. Um, I'm going to say it now and I'll repeat it for Carrie when she comes back. I know she has access to the recording after all. But yes, I'm having a list of key people, you know, who are already kind of like, you know, I want to say either community leaders, organizers who can very quickly spread the work because they have direct, you know, contacts and access with, you know, um, the groups they work with. Definitely, I think we could make a list. So in the past, 
<clears throat> we talked about this com commission having an outreach subcommittee. If we had one, I, I, this, that subcommittee will actually be working on creating such a, a list, for example, and 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 brainstorming additional ways we can best reach, you know, um, community members with information. Off the top of my head, I'm thinking already um, several clubs. I mentioned clubs on on you know various school sites on campus. Um, I'm thinking of the Black Student Union, for example, because they hold meetings every month um, and then they have a certain number of people. Um, I'm thinking um, organizations like um, the Odd Fillers, um, right? Um, they do lots of things for the community and they have the breakfast. And then, you know, again, if we had a flyer and a QR code, it's something that maybe they could, could have on site when they're having one of the um, you know, those gatherings, um, I'm thinking of places of worship as well, because those are like central points where a certain amount of people will gather. And if they just have, if those communities, you know, the authorities, the leaders there are comfortable with that, maybe, um, I know some of them have again a community board, right? So we can just have the information be available and then, and so on and so on. We have people, um, I'm thinking of uh, labor unions, um, again, because some of the examples we gave there, uh, you know, they, they could be thinking of, you know, um, someone that maybe they want to, to highlight. Or, and then also we are honoring one of our former residents who tragically lost his, his life, right? So, and I know that several will be out of goodwill, um, you know, they, they will just be happy to, to help us spread the word on that. So those are, I'm um, Kerry, you and other, I was giving examples of some groups and organizations um, that, you know, I'm, I'm calling those usually connectors because they help connect us with, you know, the rest of the community. And I mentioned some school clubs, I mentioned some places of worship, just again, having a flyer on a QR code. I mentioned the old fellows and the breakfast and all the events that, you know, they, they host and organize. And then we can identify many more in the community. Davis is pretty active. Um, so, you know, just to like a quick, Kevin, just kind of like a quick um, overview. I apologize to all, it's 8, 9, 8, 8 or 9 p.m. And uh, <laughs> my brain is starting to blank from all the meetings uh, of this week, but I am absolutely enjoying our conversation. So Kerry, you were about to share um, some thoughts with us. Thank you for indulging my quick break, MJ. Um, uh, and you may have already spoken about this, but um, when Kevin had asked about sending out to additional, you know, community groups and stuff. So we do have our um, community members that have signed up to receive the HRC agenda. So, and I think there are a couple hundred people on that list, so we can go ahead and send it to them. We also do have quite an extensive uh, community contact list that we build and try and keep updated within the city that's got kind of specific um, groups that NJ was talking about, whether it be, you know, kind of all the faith-based organizations, the different uh, community groups, you know, Rotary, some Sir Optimus, Odd Fellows, et cetera, et cetera. Um, other, you know, kind of all of the local nonprofits in town. I was just looking at that list today for something else. And I think that that would be, and we've got emails for quite a few of them. So I think that that would be an excellent idea once we've got our press release and our, our flyer our graphic designed to share that with them and then ask them to share it with their, you know, with their communities. Um, we may have done that before, Kevin, but I am sorry, it's, I'm drawing a total blank on if that happened last year or not. Either way, I've made a note of it and I think it's an excellent idea. So thank you for bringing that up. I thank you, Carrie. And I'm asking this just for the record. Um, so Judith couldn't stay with us because her, her computer died and she said she had trouble with her audio. She's asking if there is a quorum. Oh, um, if there one, is, but I'm two, letting you check. Three, four, five. Yes, you have a quorum. I'm going to note that she stepped out on my minutes mm -hmm. and then. Let me just write that down. And then we do have a member of the public if you want to do um, yes. uh, public comment. But I need to, <clears throat> is there anything else you need with this document right now? Otherwise, I'm going to stop sharing it and pull up the public. Um, no, it's not on my end. Um, fellow commissioners, you still need the document on the screen or are we good? OK, let me stop the share of this. And then let me go back to the slideshow. Mm -hmm. Share. And I'll take it to public comment. There we Thank go. Thank you. So 
Um, do we have any public comments at this time? I don't see any hands raised. Okay. So I'm back to the commissioners. Um, are we ready to close on this item? Yes. Okay. Fantastic. I would like to thank you all because that was a robust um, conversation and I'm, I'm very excited about the new iteration of the award and I look forward to um, finalizing everything in January. So we are now going to uh, move on to, um, I believe, agenda item. I'm looking at the minutes from last week, sorry. Let's scroll on the file. So 6E, so we're going to listen to committee updates. I want to acknowledge that again, uh, Kate Snow, who is our DGSD liaison, um, is not we, um, here tonight. Jordan Barney had to leave early, so we're not going to hear updates from land acknowledgement. Um, so I'm going, um, if it's okay, Carrie, um, I'm looking at the list, but I'm, I'm going from bottom to, to top, if that's okay. Switching the order a little bit. So um, community calendar, it's me. There is no update tonight, um, <clears throat> but I do have Carrie, if I may make a request uh, regarding um, events. And, and the website, I was wondering if it would be possible to have a HRC website updated. So when it comes to the Cesar Chavez and Martin Dr. King's um, celebration, the it's referring to documents dating from 2020. So um, I was wondering, um, yeah, if there could be just, a, you know, just something more, more recent. Um, Thank you, that, yeah. yes. <laughs> I will, I'm going to be on vacation for the next two weeks, so I will ask for this to be done tomorrow. I'm just making myself a note. Okay. And then I think I had um, on that some, some suggestion, and I'll send them in writing because I don't have my notes in front of me, unfortunately, but it mainly had to do with, um, yeah, so updating the information on, um, on the website. Um, yeah, I'll send it in, in writing. So back to our agenda. <clears throat> um, UC Davis connection. So this is a subcommittee with Connor and Edgar. Um, Connor, is there anything you'd like to to let to tell us, or do we have updates tonight? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> Thank you. Moving on to the next subcommittee. So it's the Local Voices Project, uh, which again is um, a project where several uh, community members put their resources together um, and then with the approval of and support of the city and several organizations, including the ACLU and um, Yellow People Power. So we are collecting um, testimonials um, from people who've had interactions with the police, with our local police. Uh, we're looking for any types of testimonial, you know, um, positive interactions, um, some that might have been more challenging. And the goal behind that is um, just so that we're looking at basically community and, and uh, police force relations and how to make it as good as possible. And, you know, what type of constructive feedback could, could just continue to make this whole um relationship as smooth um as it can be so um we don't have any uh, all i can say is that the collection of testimonials is underway um there is also a survey with that uh, the lead on this project is currently traveling so and we'll be back in in january but things are underway and progressing and again the goal um, with the data collected uh, in a very safe way is just again for the improvement of the work that's already being done. Uh, moving on to the next subcommittee, Cesar Chavez celebration uh, with Edgar and Kono. Kono, you're everywhere. How do you do it? <laughs> so Cesar Chavez celebration. Um, Kono, I will hear it from you. Um, I'm guessing we don't have updates at this time officially. Um, <clears throat> the preparation will really be on the way in January, but um, is there anything you'd like to share? Yeah, there's not, there's not any uh, direct updates right now. 
I mean, I would argue an indirect update is that the UAW strike is still ongoing um, because that's very much related. Uh, But um, yeah, there's no direct updates at the moment. Okay, thank you very much. And then um, last but not least, the anti hate subcommittee, which is made of Connor, is it okay if I say your name again? <laughs> made of Connor, of me, and of Edgar. So I, I um, was um, had a very um, good check in with Kevin and uh, and Robin, our new commissioners. Uh, you know, just wanting to introduce myself and answer any questions about the commission. And I'm mentioning that because I, I told them that uh, they will notice that um, it tends to be the same names on all the subcommittees, but that is because we were a small commission for some time and, and that work needed to be done. So we signed up. So not, uh, you know, not to pressure you in any way, but if um, you're interested in <laughs> volunteering in any of the subcommittees uh, that you see, please uh, don't be shy about it and, and let us know. <clears throat> so the entire head subcommittee, we did not meet um we did not meet in the past four weeks um one uh one thing i could share is that and edgar isn't there but he's uh you know that concerns him as well so we mentioned the head free together project that is underway with uc davis the county and the city of davis so uh edgar and i were in the meeting where they reach out to community members and ask feedback on the draft they were putting together so um, and then as uh, Kerry already told us, there will be a follow-up and um, when the city council deems right, uh, they will um, again come to the committee, um, the commission, this time as a whole, in asking for input with um, all that they're setting aside, um, setting aside, that all that they're setting to do. It's really it's time very soon to adjourn this meeting <laughs> because I'm struggling to find my words. Uh, so I think this concludes um, agenda item number six. I'm going to ask for public comments. Do we have any comments for member of the public, the member of the public with us tonight? I don't see any hand raised. Okay. And Jay, can I just ask a quick question? Who's of the course. lead on, on local voices right now? I've lost so, track. <clears throat> um, it's um, Anuj. Um, you, do you remember? He, Anuj did a yeah. presentation. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, right. with um, Anouj, and then I mentioned Yellow People Power, so uh, Francesca Wright also um, helped on that. And then, of course, um, members of the commission, you have Jordan and me, and then um, I don't remember, Angela, if you joined us when we lost one of our commission members because she went to Social Services Commission, I think. So, but again, um, like I told Kevin and Robin, if this is something you'll be interested in being involved, please uh, let us know there. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think this concludes our, our time on agenda item 6E. We're now looking at future agenda items. Um, so regarding January, I think oh. that, yes. There is, because I see on the agenda, you gave us the work plan review for January, right? Yes, I feel like, yeah, this list may have changed a little bit. Um, okay. Unless I'm, maybe my list on my screen is a little bit different. I think that's what it is, because I've been adding stuff. Yes, and yes, January could be full. We may want to, depending on where the hate free together item is, we may want to push that one to February. Which one? The hate free together, just because you're going to have Tong Hai win your work, although your work plan can also go to January and February. Yeah, I I will. I'm in favor of um the work plan on having it for for both months. Um, because sometimes I just remember the last year when we looked at it, it took us some time actually. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, Angela. I, I was just curious about the um housing language. Um, did we ever decide how that was going to be done? Or even if it is done, it would be in documents that are like very old, right? Yeah. The other thing is you guys can decide to pull some of these off that have been hanging around for a really long time. If it's not something that you're wanting to tackle right now, we could take mm -hmm. them off and then. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't even remember how that one got on there, but the truth is, is um, even, if, even if it might've been in a document mm -hmm. that's from like 
1950 or something. And actually, no. So that's the reason why it's on there. And I'm the culprit again, um, creating <laughs> trouble here. So no, what happened is that it just came to our attention and also to Gloria was the mayor at the time to her attention that um, when, when we buy a house in some neighborhoods in Davis, there is still language that is discriminatory. And that is like a, a document of today, right? Uh, where it specifically says, for example, that a non-white person cannot move into that house. Um, and that's, a, again, I'm talking about the seller's, you know, <clears throat> um, document. It's not a rental or something. And and say that it's it was in writing in the document I saw that, um, you know, if the person is in white, the only conditions they admitted on the ground and in the house is if they're doing uh, labor or you know um, or they you know the cleaner or something like that. Um, so the, that language, of course, did not originate in the twenty first century. It originates from you know times I think um, before the sixties or something like that. But it has not been changed. And um, and it and you know I've been told that you know it's going to take some heavy legal heavy lifting you know to make it happen, which doesn't mean that you know I don't see that as a reason why it shouldn't the language shouldn't be uh, corrected. Um, so that's where the that that came from. And then because it's not a time sensitive thing, we actually were never you know we we never put it on the agenda and we never uh, dove in dove into it but so i hope that answers your question yeah thank you thanks um and i see um that robin would like to to react thank you robin. thank you i'm still absorbing that restrictive covenants are um floating around in these these uh, real estate languages that's a conversation for another time I'm looking at the critical race theory backslash uh, ethnic studies counter narrative. I'm, I'm sort of curious about the wording there. Um, I'm not sure what ethnic studies counter narrative. Yes, so Kate Snow will be the best person to talk about that, but there's been, um, so for context, ethnic studies is now a high school graduation requirement, so there is that. Mm -hmm. And But in order for, for that to be adopted and for the curriculum to be um, be built, which is underway, uh, you know, we really have to work with the community and 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 have some very hard conversations um, with people who are opposed to, to that happening. So the reason you see it worded that way here is because during that time, we noticed that there is a confusion sometimes between critical race theory and ethnic studies, and people thinking that both are the same, you know, and um, those two are the same, and that that's not the case. <clears throat> so that's where, um, uh, that is coming from. And then ethnic studies, content narrative, I will need Kate to confirm, but I think the content narrative expression came in regard to um, kind of like bringing some balance to, I guess, what will be considered mainstream. Um, and there is also something regarding the fact that some, when it comes to, um, I want to say, history, contribution, and, and all that, and, and textbooks, um, sometimes it's not very balanced because there are some voices that have been, you know, that are not really present. So uh, I'm guessing the content narrative addresses that, but again, I will need Kate Snow to, to confirm. I'm familiar with the term. It was just curious to me that it was next to ethnic studies as if uh -huh. it was one concept. So oh, okay. thank you. Thank you for that. Of course. Kevin? You know, uh, we've moved on now, but I was just going to comment with respect to the uh, racially restrictive covenants. This has been addressed um, by state law as a result of uh, legislation. There have been two pieces over the last three or four years. Um, so there is now a process and a requirement that um, all those racially restrictive covenants be stricken. How do I say without <laughs> repeating myself or not sounding like a fan that it's so exciting to have a law professor with us on this commission? Thank you for that. Um, I was given the same um, information, and then I heard from you know people in in real estate that it's it seemed that on their end it's um I, I don't know what's the the whole bag, but I, I'm hoping that we'll be able to move things forward, uh, of course, very peacefully. That's not a point of contention, I think. 
But thanks for that information because you just gave us or gave me more ammunition. I'll use it carefully. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think, Harry, that we are looking at our top three, right, for January, meaning there is a Thong Hai win, uh, the Chavez planning. <clears throat> Um, and then we say that the work plan review will be spread over two months. And then we have the, the stand-in, which is a hate free um, or the hate incident and, and all. So that, that already is a, a full calendar as it is, right? Yes, I think that sounds that sounds good. And I'll work with Jenny Tan to see when would be best for her to come either in, in January or in February. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. And something we did not address is that usually we do have a, um, uh, I think at some point, maybe in February, <clears throat> we have someone from UC Davis who's supposed to present from an organization. Is that, yeah. yeah, I haven't heard from Edgar. So he's usually okay. our coordinator. Okay. And then do okay. you want to take public uh, comment on this item as well? Uh, yes when you put the clock on. Thank you. Um, so do we have any public comments on this item, future agenda items? Anything for consideration that you think uh, the commission should discuss? I don't see a hand raised, NJ. Okay, so um, this concludes our time on agenda item number seven. Dear commission members, I have excellent news for you. <laughs> <laughs> we are at the end of this meeting. So once again, I want to um, warmly, warmly welcome Kevin and Robin. We're very excited that you're here. Michael, thank you so much for joining us tonight and staying until the very end. It's always uh, a pleasure to see you. Um, and then Leanne, also the fact that you're able to come tonight, we're very grateful. So with that said, I hope that you all, all have a really, really good um, holiday season. Uh, if there is any resource announcement you like um, us to be aware of and spread the word about, the word about please email um, Carrie and you know we will um, again share with our networks. Um, I thank you all for all that you've contributed to this year for your time, energy, wisdom, and all the ways you're making a difference in our community. To the member of the public, thank you for listening in. Happy holidays and see you next year. The meeting is officially adjourned at eight twenty nine p.m. Thank you, NJ. Thank you all. Bye-bye.